five years ago, I took a look at an eBay charger that was just like this one, looked almost identical, but uh, the circuitry in it was absolutely criminal. It was dire. And I thought I'd buy another one, partly because I wanted to see if the circuitry has evolved and partly because I thought this would actually make a really good case for your own trickle charger because uh, it has the spring-loaded contacts that accommodate AA and AAA. So if you saw my other project, I'll just make loud springy clicking noises. If you saw my other project on making a USB trickle charger, it might be viable to actually make a version that goes into this or even modify this one. This feels slightly warm in the back uh, to actually operate differently. Now, I've got a meter here. We shall zoom down this. I shall focus down roughly on there, just so everything's a little bit sharper. And if we put one cell in, the current is about 176 milliamps. And you'd think that if it's fairly standard circuitry, it would roughly be, well, let's try different cells and see what they show. 175. 175, and even the AAA, 172. So, you know, it's quite a lot of current to trickle charge continuously at AAA. However, if you take that figure, uh, 107, let's say 177, it says at the moment. Okay, so that's 177 milliamps times 4 equals, you'd expect to go to 708 milliamps under full load. But when I put them all in, it actually only goes to about 450 milliamps, so I'm not sure what circuitry is in here. Are they using a common shared resistor, or is it just the resistance of this cable that's affecting that? I mean, it's not a bad thing. It means that uh, as the number of cells goes up, it's going to put less strain on your power supply. Not that, you know, half an amp, or what, even if it had been the 700 milliamps, it wouldn't have been an issue. But anyway, I digress. Let's do what we're here for, and whip the back off it. Is that screwdriver going to fit? Oh, it's barely going to fit. And we'll see what's inside and if it's improved. I'll take that. I'll take my precious posh nickel metal hydride cells out first. This is designed for nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium, if you still have any. Trickle charging isn't a bad thing, but it's not something you want to leave them charging for long periods of time with a very high current. That's why my version uh, only charged at about, say, 20 milliamps or something like that. Can't even remember what it charged at. Let's see if the circuit board is different. Let's see if it explodes into pieces when I take it apart. No, it doesn't. So one circuit board, not seeing a lot on it. Nothing on the other side other than the LEDs, which I've just nudged out of place, and the contacts. Here's the little springy negative contacts. Um, really dodgy soldering up here. Right, tell you what, tell you what. I shall take the usual picture, and then we'll explore it and see if this is hackable. One moment, please. And resume. And this circuit is much better. I'll zoom in this. It's quite a wide circuit board, though. It's going to take up all the space. The incoming supply goes onto these rather splodged contacts. Notice the copper looks like it's lifted just with the heat. It's a very cheap and nasty circuit board. It's a very cheap and nasty product. They've soldered this wire on, but then out of impatience, uh, they've kind of let it go before the solder's uh, cooled down completely, so it's spread a bit. doesn't really matter. We've got the positive coming on here, and we've got the negative just going round to all the negative contacts of the cells. The positive goes to these two resistors in parallel, both roughly 5.1 ohm. This one is strangely accurate, 5.11 ohm, 5R11. And then there's a wee tiny one with the same rough value, 5.1 ohm. I'm not sure why there's two different sizes. And then it goes to a common positive bus that has a 18 ohm resistor going to the positive contact for the main current, and then a 150 ohm resistor, 151, 15 and 10, in series with the LED, then also going to that contact, and that is just repeated four times. Let me show you the schematic. Here is the schematic, and I have to say, I got a bit of deja vu here from the previous design. We have the two parallel resistors there, one big and one small. That's probably the bit that got warm earlier on. 
And then we've got the 18 ohm just passing current straight down to the cell. It would have been nice to put a diode in here, even one diode here, because when you plug it into a USB power supply, if you unplug the power supply but leave it plugged in, these batteries will gradually discharge back through this resistor and these ones. Um, and the usually USB power supplies have a, a fairly high-ish value resistor across them, but left for long enough, it will basically discharge all your cells. That's a bit strange. Um, but most of the current flows through this 18 ohm resistor. That's what sets the bulk of the current. But there's also current flowing through this 150 ohm uh, resistor and the LED to make it light up. And that shows you when there's a cell in that position. There's no fancy monitoring. The LED will not go off when it's charged. All that will happen is that it just keeps trickle charging all the time. And with standard nickel metal hydride cells, it's not recommended to charge them at very high current all the time. They're okay for a short period of time. But if you do, what happens at the end is they form gas bubbles on the electrodes. And although those can convert back into the electrolyte by a chemical process inside, it does result in higher pressure and it can result in slight loss of electrolyte. It's just not ideal for them. But it's fine at low current. And that means the easiest fix here, <coughs> excuse me, is to get rid of these 18 ohm resistors. Just basically just chop them out. And then you could actually just have the 150 ohm resistor, or you could increase those if you wanted. And that will turn it into a very simple trickle charger. Replace that with a diode uh, over there, and that would fix that problem as well. Um, and I got deja vu here with that previous design. I looked at it. I looked up, took a wee screen grab here. And the screen grab showed the hideous circuitry. There's a 2.2 ohm resistor. And then there was a 20 ohm resistor feeding the battery and then they just stuck the LED in without any current limiting whatsoever. So in that previous design, the current through the LEDs was ridiculous. And at the end of that video, I kind of drew this little bit here that said, this is how I'd have done it. The resistor there, but a resistor in series, the LED. And that is what it is in this design. Were they inspired by their original video or is this a completely different charger? Who knows? But the answer with this set here is that simple thing that uh, these little 18 ohm resistors just uh, get a soldering iron and slide them off. You know, I'm going to do that right now. One moment, please. The soldering iron is now up to temperature. I've got a cardboard box here 3D QF, 3D quality filaments. Filaments are actually made in the UK and they seem quite good quality. I just thought I'd mention that. Not a sponsor. It's what I've switched to using. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove those two resistors here at the input the big one and the little one and all i'm doing here is just slide them off Oop, i completely failed to slide that one off and ping them to the side then i'm removing all the little 18 ohm resistors that are passing the highest current so just wipe them off again by splooshing some solder on them and then using the solder to just basically swipe them off. That's one advantage of surface mount components, these little ones. You can basically get the solder iron on both ends at once. And wipe. Okay, now I do have a Schottky diode. I'm going to have to use a magnifying glass to make sure I've got this Schottky diode the right way around. But what I'm going to be doing here, I'm going to be using my magnifying glass to check that there is a little splash of solder. No, it's fine. Have I definitely removed those resistors completely and not stuck to the circuit board somewhere? I'm going to put uh, the diode here and the Schottky diode. Yeah, the little band is there. Why a Schottky diode? No particular reason. Um, it's just what I uh, had handy. So I shall be doing it trash style by putting a little bit of flux on there, sitting this on and just basically splooshing one end. This is where I will screw up. I'll also block all the light from the bench lights. If we can get one end stuck, that's usually a good start. And then we can just squish the other one down while I melt the other end. Very professional, yes. There's no finesse with a uh, with surface mount. Well, this is not going to plan. Let me just get a little bit more solder in there. Maybe I should actually squish that one across a bit. I think I will squish that across a bit just to make more room. So I can get a better connection. It's so footry. There is no choice. You have to use surface mount these days. I defied it for so long. But now there is no choice. And to be honest, I'm not too bothered. It's actually 
quite pleasant to work with, actually. That's nice. So once I've done that in, let it cool down, I'll just reflow a tiny touch of solder on the other end, and that will be it in place. Now, theoretically, if I remove this out of the way, and I plug it back into the tester, when I put the cells in, uh, the current should be much lower. It will be probably about 15 milliamps. I'm not sure. Where is the power supply? There are numbers all over the power supply because each time I charge it, I write the capacity that went into it. So at the moment, uh, showing zero current. Pop a cell in. LED lights up. It's showing 10 milliamps. That's ideal as a sort of trickle charger. That's all right. And it should kind of show that for each and every single one of these. So it's now up to 19, now up to 29, and now up to 38. So roughly 10 milliamps. And all the current is now going through the LEDs. To show you that on the drawing, um, since I've removed moved those and I've put the diode in here, it is a little Schottky diode. I should draw that in as a little Schottky diode. The current is going through the Schottky diode and now it's going through the 150 ohm resistor and the LED straight to the cell. And that means that it's not going to reverse discharge into the power supply you use it with or power bank or whatever. Um, and at that current, it's just going to be ideal for topping cells up or just leaving them on a permanent, just a, a gentle trickle in the background so they're ready for use and uh, fully topped up to the hilt. It means that a cell this size, what is this one? 2,000 milliamp hour, that would take, like, yeah, that would take a very, very long time to charge if you actually trusted it, if you wanted to charge it completely. It's more for topping up. This would also be very good for rescuing uh, cells that your smart charger didn't recognize because when you put them in here, it doesn't care what voltage it starts at. It's going to boost it up and actually get it back in action. So uh, the power supply, in short, has improved and it's extremely hackable. I'll put my little tub of Topnik RF800 uh, Flux, just a generic cheap Flux, sold strangely by Polish sellers on eBay in the UK. Uh, ceramic tweezers, strongly recommended. The main thing is that because they're not metal, they're very heat proof and they don't uh, stick so badly to components. They don't have magnetic effects, uh, or, but they do get resin on them. And when they get resin, rosin on them, the Flux, they do get a bit sticky. You have to clean them every so often. I'd say that's a success for the conversion that I wanted to do, and that is basically just converting this from the original fairly high current uh, charger into just a basic little trickle charger, ideal for just topping cells up. So that's a good result.